What's, What's on, on the, the bench? bench? Hey, slot car fans, this is Rob DeLeon with the DeLeon Slot Car Raceway. And as you can see here, we've got the turntable out and we've got a car on the turntable. Well, what is this? Well, let's talk about it. Born to run, baby. Born to run. Welcome to the DeLeon. So this one here is a car from Sideways and this is the BMW 320 Turbo. So this car is from 1979 and it featured a turbocharged four-cylinder inline engine producing up to 450 horsepower at 9,500 RPM. So this was one of the monster cars of the 70s and they said it was so powerful it was kind of difficult to drive. I just love these older DTM cars and this would have been a group five car here. What I like about the car is the aggressive styling with the very, very widened fenders. As far as other cars that I have it's similar to this, um, I was gonna show you the Carrera, and this is the 3.5 BMW. And this one also has a very nice aggressive look, but I think it looks, I think this looks a lot better. Maybe just the way it sits tires are tucked up a little bit underneath the fender kind of the way it would have looked in real life um, now this one here has an inline motor and this is a digital car this car actually runs pretty good uh, ever since I pulled this out of the box it's run pretty good the tires seem to be getting a little bit harder you know now that I've had it probably for about six months or so but I think it still runs pretty good um, as far as this one goes, this one has not been run yet. This one is basically out of the package. Uh, but what I definitely like about this, and let's go in a little bit tighter and, and take a look at some of the details. So it's got some really nice headlights, although they don't work. Uh, but one of the things that is most striking to this car is the wheels. I really like that BBS kind of a uh, matte silver spoke with the polished outers. And so this car here has uh, aluminum wheels in the rear and then plastic in the front. And so another thing I've noticed about some of these cars, and it's not particular to any brand, but this one has kind of a semi-gloss finish. Not quite glossy, but it looks like it's maybe got a clear coat above those decals. And I'll tell you why that's interesting and why it's important. As I was messing with a car that I had a couple of weeks ago, and I could definitely tell that that car had no clear over the decals. And I was thinking about it, and while I was working on the car, I, I think I had my hand on the roof and I was doing something with the screwdriver and I was checking something out. And when I was done, I noticed that some of the color of the decal came off my finger and left kind of a white mark on the decal. And so, when that happens, you can definitely tell that the decals weren't cleared. Now, I like to bury my decals under the clear. I just think it protects them a lot better. So if you ever come across a car that has that kind of finish, where it looks like the decal has a very flat finish, and maybe the paint is glossy, that's most likely because the decals are not cleared. And you want to take very good care of those, uh, because those are the kind of decals that usually if you hold them or touch them enough the acid in your fingers will take the color off if that's something that really is important to you some people I know it's not but anyway so this is one of my favorite cars like I'm saying I really dig the aggressive looks and to uh, continue with this particular style let's show you another one and this is also going to be another livery with the Jägermeister. Now you can see how glossy this one is. This one is just, it shines. This is the uh, Porsche 934, obviously with Jägermeister livery. Now let's look at some facts about this car here. This was originally a twin turbo car and it was a three liter engine basically put out about 485 horsepower at about 7,000 RPM. This is one of my absolute favorite cars. Um, I remember as a kid, I saw this one vehicle 
that Tamiya put out. It was an RC car and it was this livery. And I hadn't seen that car again for decades. And then last year, Tamiya decided to go ahead and re-release that car a little bit different than they did the original. Uh, they made some updates to it and uh, the livery changed, but the car was basically pretty much the same. And I was able to get my hands on one of those kits. And the funny thing is those kits originally sold for about, I'm gonna say $270, maybe $300. Those kits are now selling on eBay for close to $2,000. And it's kind of ridiculous that that kind of thing goes on. But, you know, a lot of people bought these kits just to basically go put them on eBay and sell them. But luckily, we haven't had to deal with that in the slot car world yet, at least as far as I can tell. Um, you can still always get cars that you're looking for. They're not being hoarded by most people. And they're still sort of relatively affordable. So anyway, this is one of my favorite cars of all times. That is the Jägermeister Porsche 934. Since we're already on a roll here, and by the way, before I take this car off here, this one it basically just has a sidewinder motor. And it's got a little bit of detail here underneath it. Although I don't see the twin turbos, obviously it probably really didn't consider putting those on. But uh, those gold BBS wheels, man, those just look right. The stance is pretty good. I like the stance of it. And it does have a very glossy finish, unlike the BMW we just took a look at. Detail in the interior is pretty good. Yeah, this is a nice car. I think this probably will be one of my favorites moving forward. Um, I just gotta get it to work right on the track, so maybe it'll need some uh, tire truing etc and so with that let's move on to another car and this is the pontiac riley it was originally driven in mexico city if i'm not mistaken i believe this is a collaboration between the u.s and mexico there's a number of different liveries for this car i thought this one was one of the nicer ones and one thing i really like about some of these cars and, and i'm going to say that if we go back and look at this one the depth on the wheels always looks correct to me. If it's done right and it has a little bit of depth like that, it, it just kind of makes the car for me. That's kind of one of my weird pet peeves. Um, this one, the same thing. If we look at it close up, you can see that wheel in the rear has a lot of depth and you can see the different offset on the fronts here, which is gonna be usually because there's gonna be a difference in tire width most of the time yeah it's a little bit different there and so this one has an inline here this is a fly slot by the way it's kind of a delicate wing back here i haven't put this one on the track i don't know if it actually will run it looks like it rubs right there right at the top of that tire on the fender so i might have to do a little work on it to get it to run right but it sure does look good i just like the way the body style looks so again, that was the uh, Pontiac Riley. And uh, you know what, let's do another one, right? We already got the turntable out. It's already moving, why not? So here's a used car I picked up. And uh, I was kind of going on a, uh, I was going on an LMP kick for a while. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that the Golf livery is also one of my favorites. And so this one here is the Audi R8. And golf livery. Now the weird thing is that I looked at pictures of this car uh, in real life races and this color does not match up to the real car. This color is very light blue and the original from what I can tell by the pictures it was a much darker blue. And it's neither here nor there but it's just a thing that I noticed. And see what I was talking about I know this is probably correct, but you see how those rear wheels are flush to the tire? I don't know why, but that's always bothered me. I always like the look of deep set rear wheels. Same thing with the Porsche. You know, you've got a nice wide lip right here. And to me, that just works. I know some of the newer cars don't do that for whatever reason, 
and this is more of the modern look here. But none of the cars I've shown you here actually have seen the track yet, except for this one here. This one, obviously, I've been running this for a while. This one has the uh, slot invasion guide. But uh, uh, this BMW here, the Porsche, and this LMP, and the Riley, none of them have seen the track. They need to be adjusted and uh, worked on. And you know what? Let's do another one. We're already here. Again, like I said, the turntable's already rolling. Let's pull another car out. Maybe a car that you haven't seen before. So here, this is the 2000 Cadillac LMP. And this is a scale electric, if I'm not mistaken. It says Hornby on the bottom, so I'm assuming it's a scale electric. And this is a car I actually bought at Electric Dreams used. Um, and this car belonged to Dennis from Electric Dreams. And he already had put some uh, silicone tires on there. And I've ran it on the Electric Dreams wooden track, and it runs pretty good for a scale electric. I've started collecting some of these open top LMP cars. I really like the look. Anyway, I don't really have any other information on this one except that it is a uh, scale electric. Looks like it has a, uh, has a, is it an inline motor? It might be an inline motor. I don't see a spur gear, so yeah, that's probably an inline. But it's got a lot of detail on it. it. Runs good. And it looks good. Anyway, guys, that is all I have to show you. Now, I know everybody right now is showing the brand new slotted cars, you know, the McLarens and the Porsche 962s. Well, I have those two cars sitting right here in a box next to me. But I thought I would just hold off and show you something different because most people have already seen everybody doing their videos of those new cars. In fact, I haven't even opened them, so I don't even know what they look like yet. I know what they look like, but I don't know like truly what they look like up close. So after I finish this video, I'll probably be unboxing those just for myself and uh, we'll take a look at those. And then I'll probably do another episode of what's on the bench. So that's it for tonight, guys. Um, you guys have a great night or a great day, depending on where you're at in the world. And uh, we will talk to you later. All right. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. And if you like this kind of content, please give us a like and subscribe.